In this video, what you should avoid during menstruation and why do we have such rulings in Islam? Are these rulings degrading to a woman? A comparison between Islamic rulings concerning menstruation and the attitude of other cultures, religions and modern society towards it. See how Islamic rulings are uplifting, beneficial and sensitive to a woman's feelings. I get asked about menstruation and how it affects the rulings of prayer and fasting quite a bit. And most often these are oft repeated questions because sometime or the other every one of us faces similar situations. And this is why we need to make ourselves aware of important and relevant rulings so that we make an informed decision when in need. Since then there won't be enough time to search and inquire. But before we indulge ourselves in specific rulings, let's take a step back and quickly brush up on the basics. This will inshallah answer a whole lot of questions and then we can tackle specific questions that remain in later clips. So let's get started. A normal monthly flow usually lasts about 3 to 5 days. And of course it can vary from woman to woman and even last up to 7 days, 10 days or even more depending on the age, weight, environment and other factors. And during these days you are excused from fasting and prayer. Islam has prohibited the husband to join with his menstruating wife during these days. Apart from that, touching, fondling, embracing, everything is permissible. What you should also avoid is tawaf and staying in the masjid. But you can sit in a place that is attached to the masjid. There's nothing wrong with that. If there is a need, you may pass through like going from door to door or collecting something from the masjid. Once, Allah's Messenger asked Aisha to fetch him a prayer mat from the masjid. She hesitated because of the monthly cycle. Upon this, Allah's Messenger remarked, Menstruation is not in your hand. Personally, this remark of Allah's Messenger gives me great peace of mind and serenity to my heart because this is a grand proof of the fact that Islam does not consider us women as impure such that if we were to step inside the masjid, we will pollute it which in fact is the main idea behind many strong restrictions in various other religions for the prohibition of menstruating women entering sacred places. Sadly enough, there is a tendency amongst secular awareness groups to club Islamic rulings along with those of other cultures and religions. Rulings which are indeed degrading to the women. But if we take a deeper look, it will become apparent that the Islamic rulings, they are a mercy from Allah, where women are excused from fasting and praying. This is lessening the burden of obligations since menstruation itself brings enough hardships for us to bear. All these rulings are for hygiene purposes and health benefits as we now know with the advancement of science that during these days a woman's reproductive system is quite sensitive and vulnerable and hence more susceptible to infections. Islam has thus forbidden the husband to join with her. This is unlike what is found in other cultures Menstruation was and still is a cause of discrimination against women. In some rural areas of Nepal and also Kenya, they have menstrual huts that women have to stay in during that time of the month. This unnecessary and inconvenient practice is not found in villages alone. Even in cities, in various Hindu societies, she is isolated from her husband and family during these days. They have a separate area for her to sleep. She is not allowed to cook, serve or touch the drinking water or even come in contact with other people's food. It is thought that everything a woman touches in this state would rot or become unclean and polluted. By these needless practices, women are made to face an embarrassing separation with everyone knowing why. 
She suffers seclusion once every month or almost a quarter of her life. Whereas in Islam, there is no such restriction at all. Umm al muminin Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha narrates, I would drink when I was menstruating. Then I would hand over the vessel to the Prophet and he would drink from where I drank. I would eat from a bone when I was menstruating, then hand it over to the Prophet and he would eat from the same place. Umm al muminin Maymuna radiallahu ta'ala anha narrates, The Messenger of Allah used to lie with me when I was menstruating. Such relaxed attitude because Islam sees the monthly cycle as a natural biological process. When Allah's Messenger found Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha weeping because of the monthly cycle during Hajj, he consoled her. He said, this is something Allah has ordained for all the daughters of Adam. So do everything except tawaf. And it is this relaxed attitude of accepting the monthly cycle as part of you which is reflected in the explanation of Islamic scholars who discourage taking pills to offset the cycle. But does the seemingly modern and progressive world also take such a relaxed view? Whilst primitive cultures may see menstruation as a curse, modern attitudes towards menstruation are not too progressive as well. When they see it as a hurdle in being socially accepted and a problem that needs to be dealt with, thus generating a huge demand for products that make menstruation totally invisible. And these include a wide range of menstrual suppression pills, medications and antidepressants. Cultural, modern or Islamic? Which of these attitudes are truly progressive, uplifting, beneficial and sensitive to the feelings of a woman? In Islam, there is no complete isolation nor an obsession with making menstruation completely invisible. Instead, in consideration, the worships are lightened for her. And me being a woman, I truly appreciate the concessions allowed. Menstruation poses limitations? Yes. But it's not a problem in Islam. If we cannot do a few certain acts of worship, this should not make us feel restricted. There is a lot more which we can do.